And I am so delighted to have Kathleen Tyson back with us for another session on Google Classroom. She is uh, going to do an amazing session. I'm going to share screen quickly with you and show you what's new in the last couple of weeks on Music Play Online. So I'm sharing my screen now and I hope everybody can see this. So we have in units, two lovely units for your back to school. So one lovely, three actually, um, we have in drumming, we have this amazing frame drum unit by James Allen from Connecticut. He is an amazing teacher. He's got videos that walk you through how to do everything, the procedures written out in a step-by-step -step way. PDFs for download. So, and we have a body percussion unit by Christian from Costa Rica. And he's this amazing body percussion expert, performer actually. And Christian will be joining us next Wednesday. And he's going to teach you how to teach that to children. And of course, we're going to go in a much similar to the festivals and holidays. All your back to school fun activities, if you're in person, are here. And of course, if you're in person and if you're at home, we need to be teaching kids about healthy habits. So these are all SEL songs here for kids to learn to be kind to each other and all the things that we need to be doing right now. So the stay apart is a lots, lots of fun. We have an English, you can do the lyrics or the notation and PDFs of the song to hands it uses me ray do and then we'll stay apart here is as well and then our little support activity and this is going to grow by one additional song um if i don't have room to put it here i will put it in online learning so we added to online learning the virtual music rules so if you want to use those, they're here in, in Virtual Learned. I have made it up to September week two of pre-K, K and grade one. And I hope the rest of the lessons will be going online soon. I am going to put month outline PDFs in general, and it'll be called a module. But really what that module is for is going to be to house the month outlines for September. And I'm including month outlines for um, what's in the snow, what was originally planned for Music Play Binders. And then two, what I'm going to do in the online learning modules for students at home, suggestions for how you can use it virtually. So that's all I have to say. I'm gonna stop sharing and I want you to um, enjoy the session with Kathleen. We've got quite a bit of time for her to answer questions today. So, um, uh, instead of chatting your questions in the chat, if you use the questions box, it makes it a little easier for our moder moderators. So joining me and joining Kathleen and enjoy the Google Classroom session. Hi everyone. Welcome to Music Play Online and Google Classroom. Practical advice for great virtual and hybrid music classes. My name is Kathleen Tyson and I'm so happy that you're here to join us on today's journey to figure out some quick tips and tricks of how to make your lessons even better than they already were. One of the biggest questions that Denise receives at Music Play Online is, how do I post a link to a learning module or to a song within Google Classroom? So we are going to answer that with some tips today and I'll walk you through exactly what you need to do. So here's a picture of my old classroom. Um, I'm now teaching in the auditorium, but this is my um, classroom before. Very active or based classroom um, with many, many, many activities as you can see. I put this into Google Slides, I'm going to show you by using slides.google.com. And it shows up here as docs.google.com because everything has that URL. But you can type in slides.google.com to get there. Let me show you. Slides.google.com. 
et voila, and you can choose a blank document or you can grab one that you already have and edit it. So here was my presentation and I simply took a picture of my classroom and dropped it in as an image on there and then I dropped this over the top and in the next slide, I dropped what would be my introduction in a music class. Of So let's do that together. I'm going to hit present. Now, before we sing it actually, I want to show you how I put that in there. So what you do is you click insert. Let me find a place to go. I'll go right here in the slide. You go right there. Click insert video and I already had put in the URL copy that right out of the YouTube um, share button and it gives me the option of is it this Royal School songs led by Miss Tyson with a little help from her friends yes and you hit select and then it pops up and there it is now I have it twice <laughs> so I'll delete that one so when you click on it you can get a preview over here and you could listen to it over here and you can even set it to start at a certain time in the video or end at a certain time and you can click autoplay so that it will automatically play when they get there. You can also mute the audio of it if you want them to see a video but not hear anything you can mute the audio. So let's play it and have a listen. And some of you may have seen that video before if you were at my virtual hey, choir session um, during the online odyssey this summer. And um, that gets the students going within the slideshow with something they already know, your school song. And um, it's really fun and quick and easy to put those together, by the way. It's not as hard as it looks. And so now let's put in a link. So let's go to the song Ham and Eggs in musicplayonline.com and we are going to embed some information from Ham and Eggs. So some activities, the song, everything for your students. So let's go to musicplayonline.com and you are going to log into your teacher account. And you could click on any grade actually to get to the songs and I'm going to type in Ham and hit submit and oh there are a lot of songs here's ham and eggs let me type it ham and eggs and now notice when I typed the entire title ham and eggs only one song came up in the song list I could take right now this link up here that's called a URL I could hit copy and I can go back to my Google slideshow and I could enter that here as a hyperlink. It's control K or command K and you paste it in and there's a link now for the students. So if I present this let me go back. If I go to here and the students click on that, it's going to take them directly to that song in Music Play Online and to that page. And so they can click and hear the song or do any of the other activities in there. That's the simplest way um, to grab a link. So let me show you again. Let's grab a different song. Let's grab the song Chester.
and only one song comes up, Chester. Grab the URL. Let's go back to Google Slides. I need to not present anymore. Um, let me click in here. And let me hit Command K on my Mac. You would hit Control K on a PC. Paste in the link. And I'm going to type in Chester and apply. And now I'm going to go back a page again and hit present. When I go from page to page, we have the school song there. And then here I now have a link for ham and eggs and a link for Chester. It's really that simple. And then the song Chester and all of its activities come up for the student. Neat, right? That's the quick and easy way to put something into Google Slides. So now let's escape my presentation. Um, for ham and eggs, I might want to give the students some directions, right? And not just a link. I'm going to delete Chester. I'm sorry, Chester. And I'm going to add some directions here that say, sing along with ham and eggs by clicking on, let's see what the video is called. Oh, I have to go back to ham. Here we go. It's called the notation video or the lyrics video. Either one. They could sing with either one, right? By clicking on the movie at the bottom, choose notation or lyrics video. Okay, so. That gives the students the directions. I want to center that. Sing along with ham and eggs by clicking on the movie at the bottom of the uh, page. By clicking on the link. movie at the bottom of the page that opens. <laughs> I'm trying to make it as clear as possible for the students. And you could teach them how to do this when you're live. And so they could do this when they're recorded as well. Uh, when you give them a recorded lesson, I mean. Um, and choose the notation or the lyrics video. So you're giving them some leeway to choose one. Now I'm going to duplicate this slide. To duplicate you hit Command D or Control D and now I have a second slide that says the same thing and it still has the ham and eggs link. Now click this link again and click on movies. Click on movie and then what is it called? Movies kids demo watch the kids demo movie okay and this is going to be super fun when they watch the kids demo and i think you all know the kids demo right let's watch for a second So you can see, if you don't know this song already, half of the group is doing ham and half is doing eggs. And they even split up the flip-flops on those octave leaps. Um, this is super fun to do with it. <laughs> really, really fun. They can sing along with the notation or lyrics video to learn the song. And then they can watch the kids demo. And then I'm going to duplicate this. Watch the kids demo again and do all of the actions.
the kids on the video. Now, if you have students and you are in a hybrid model, you could perhaps have the kids in the classroom with you doing the ham and the kids on the Zoom doing the eggs. Or you could have half of each group doing the ham and half of each group doing the eggs. If you are in full virtual mode, you could have, um, and say you have Google Meet or Zoom open, you could have half the kids doing ham and half doing eggs. It's always gonna be a little bit off due to lag time in their little boxes, but it'll be a lot of fun as you're playing the song for them um, if you're teaching live. Um, so have the kids do all the actions with the kids on the video. The neat part about the song, if you don't know it yet, is that um, it gets faster and faster with each verse. Um, so um, it gets harder to keep track. It's sort of like my Bonnie lies over the ocean and having um, a little bit difficult. Um, so I'm going to center this as well to make it look prettier. Um, if you wanted to be, um, make it look even prettier, you could take a screenshot of ham and eggs and put it in here and make that the clickable link. So let me show you how to do that. Um, I just want to center this to make it look beautiful. Um, ham and eggs. Here it is. I'm going to grab a screenshot of this and click. And you are licensed to do this if you are a licensed user of the program. So I'm actually going to grab that screenshot and I'm going to put it in here. Insert image from computer. Where is my download? Uh, it's on the desktop. It's right there. Open. Got it. Now, hmm, that just covered up everything, didn't it? I can grab a corner and make it smaller and put it down here. That. And I clickable link within this. So let me grab my ham and eggs link again. Here it is. Copy. And I'm going to hyperlink this box. Apply. So now I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to move this box over. Centered. Now when the student is in present mode and they click this box, and eggs without having to click a hyperlink itself. The box became the hyperlink. So I'm going to show you again how to do that because that may have been a little bit fast. So I'm going to get rid of this actual hyperlink that looks like a hyperlink and I'm going to insert an image. I'm going to upload it because I took a screenshot. There's a screenshot. I'm going to shrink it and then I'm going to center it. The little thing lights up when it's centered. Got it. And then I'm going to add a hyperlink to this box by touching the box with my mouse so that it's highlighted and you see all the squares light up and hit Command K on a Mac or Control K on a PC and paste that link in, apply, and now the box is a clickable link. So now I have to change my directions. Sing along with ham and eggs by clicking on the picture. And then choose movie at the bottom of the page that opens. Choose the notation or the lyrics video. Your choice. I might even write your choice. And then the next one, click this picture again. Click on movies, watch the kids demo. Got it. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy this. Control C or Command C, depending on your platform. And I'm just going to paste it in there. Get rid of 
that. And it should already be a clickable link. Watch the kids demo again and do all of the actions with the kids in the video. Um, so this should be a clickable link already because I copied it. Yes, it is. So I just made a copy. Perfect. You have now learned how to paste in an image and then how to add a hyperlink to the image to take you to a site. You also learned how to just add a hyperlink and you learned how to add a video from YouTube a second ago as well. So how confident are you feeling right now? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. So I want you to take a moment to type in the chat if you're watching this live how confident you're feeling that you can add those hyperlinks right now and that you can hyperlink a screenshot or a picture and that you can add a YouTube video. So let's do it on a scale of one to four, with four being you are a master and a three being you can mostly do it, a two you need a little bit of help and one you, you're really not sure. So I hope I see a lot of fours right now. Go ahead and type that number in the chat and we are going to go on. So now my friends, we are going to look at another way to add a link without using Google Slides and just add it directly into Google Classroom. So remember from my last workshop that this page in Google Classroom is called the Class Card page. Select the class you would like to add the link to. Here it is, my Music Play Online September 2nd workshop class. And I always add my materials and classwork for the kids in the classwork section. So I click on classwork and I'm going to create a new assignment. And this is going to be called September 2nd music class. I'm also going to add an emoji because I like emojis. So let's I have a MacBook Pro with the touch bar so I can just touch that up at the top. If you don't have that you can use an emoji font. I'm also going to add bullets by using emojis here and I make bullet points. I am going to go to music play and I grab the URL for ham and eggs. Remember how Command C from the URL section. I'm going to click here, add a link, add link. And there's ham and eggs. So I'm going to say, click the link for ham and eggs and sing with the lyrics, or well, actually they could sing with notation or lyrics video. Then click the link for kids demo and just watch the activity. Choose which part you'd like to do. Ham or eggs. Then click the kids demo again and do the motion for ham or for eggs. Okay? And I already added the link there and I'm going to assign it to just this class, although I could also assign it to my children's choir, that would be fun. And then you can select which students you wanna assign it to. If you have actual students in your class, um, it will have a whole running list of the students and you could check off which ones you want to get the assignment. Choose how many points this is worth. Choose a due date. Choose a topic. Let's create a topic, this is gonna be for music classes. You can even add a rubric and you can either assign it or you could schedule it to assign. 
let's just assign it. So now that's in the assignments here, and the students will just open it, read it, click the link, and they can follow those directions they just saw in classwork. And they can go back and forth between the two tabs. This is actually really easy for your older students to just see this bulleted list and click on the links. Your younger students may like the whole Google slide approach where they can click through each activity. Is if you can teach it live. <laughs> okay, we are going to add an activity. So I am going to duplicate this slide for now. And I'm going to delete this. And we are going to add an activity from Music Play, and that's this. So maybe you wanted your students to sort tempo terms after having done ham and eggs, which had different tempi in it. And um, there's an activity within this lesson. So here's ham and eggs. And if you click on interactive other, you would have to tell the students to click on that and then click on tempo sort. And then the students could sort these in order, which we know is, is going to go from Largo to Adagio, uh, morera, Morerato to Allegro, Presto, and Prestissimo. And the students could do this right on their device and maybe take a screenshot for you and then turn it in inside Google Classroom. Or you could take a screenshot of this activity and so click on it and take your screenshot. I already taught you how to do that. And then screenshot each of the animals as well. And then you are going to build your own sorting activity inside Google Slides. So let's do a new slide. Here it is. And this is going to be a tempo sort. Call it sort the tempo words. Um, and maybe this is after you taught about it. Make sure you teach about the tempo words first, unless it's a review for your older students. So I am now going to click here and click insert image from computer. And my screenshot I just took was right here. And there it is. So here's the screenshot of the tempo words. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to delete this box that was there. To click on the blue thing to delete it. Drop this into the page. And I am going to now um, add some other images. Upload from computer. I'm going to add all of these other ones that I screenshotted. Screenshotted? Oh, we'll find out. So here's some other um, tempes. So I'm going to just put these over the top of the ones that Denise had on her PDF. I'm going to put the cat there. Here's the deer. Or is that an elk? I think it's a deer. Um, Largo is the snail. Drop them in there. The turtle. Maybe that's a tortoise. Here is a leopard. Is that a leopard or a cheetah? I need to watch Animal Planet more than my cats do. They have all the animals memorized. Okay, so I dropped them in there. And then the students will have a tempo sort. Um, and if in Google Classroom, when you assign this, if you leave for every student, um, you will get their work turned into you. So the students will just grab these and drag them into the correct order. Super easy, right? So um, we're going to start with Largo. Look, Largo, Adagio, Moderato, 
Mm-mm. Where am I? Allegro, presto, and then prestissimo. There we go. And you might want to make these smaller so they fit in the box and don't. Um, um, make them smaller. And so the students would turn this into you in Google Classroom. I'm going to show you how in a moment. Um, there you go. Bam. Look at how easy that is. Um, so now I don't want the students to have those there. So I'm going to pull them back. Auto. I grow. Tissimo. Et voila. Okay, so I'm going to add one more slide. When you are finished, let's add a bulleted list. I love bulleted lists. When you have sorted your tempo words. and click mark as done on the assignment and attach the Google slide show or some students I'm gonna write, or attach a screenshot of the finished page of um Screenshot of the sorted tempo words. Okay, so there is that. Now, I like to add little arrows on here. Um, like, for example, I grab a shape, an arrow, and I'll draw an arrow in like that. And then I'm going to hyperlink that. And I'm going to hyperlink it to the next slide so that when the student clicks the arrow when we're in present mode I'm actually going to copy this I'm going to put it on every page and you could color that in um, and color in the arrow like by choosing fill up here like maybe you want it to be um, this green color that sort of matches. Oh, that's not quite. It's like a greenish blue for the theme. That color. Um, let me copy that one now. Add these. Add an arrow on each page. <clears throat> arrow. That one I managed to make smaller. And then this one, I'm going to hyperlink back to Google Classroom. Apply. And so they're going to click that arrow, and that's going to take them back to Google Classroom. So now, let's look at the entire thing. I'm going to click Present. And this is the presentation I just gave to you all. The student literally just has to click on that arrow and it goes through the whole thing. And remember, this is also a clickable link. Okay. Now that took them out of the slideshow. So we have to go back to the arrow. Now here's their tempo sort, remember. So they go Largo. Oops, wait, go back. Oh, sorry, you know what I did? I was in present mode. The student has to be in edit mode in order to move these around. So, then uh, Adagio, then Moderato, etc. right? And then they click the arrow, but they have to be in present mode, yikes. And then when you're finished, when you have sorted your tempo words, go to Google Classroom and click Mark is done and attach the slideshow. So the student is going to, we're going to um, go to Google Classroom now. And I'm going to create a new assignment. And got it. And I'm going to call this 
Um, September 2nd, music class slideshow. And then this is going to be say, click through all of the slides in the link below. And then I need, um, at the end, sort the tempo words from slow to fast. Come back to Google Classroom and mark as done. Okay, so we're going to add a link and it's going to say from Google Drive. Um, but I'm actually not going to do it from Google Drive. I'm going to grab a link to this presentation and I'm going to click share. Get a link. I've copied the link and only the people added to it can get the link for right now. When you're at school, I'm actually in my personal Google account right now. Um, you can choose to share it within your organization. Um, and you can also choose to make a copy for each student. So let's go here, add a link. There we go. And right here, this is the most important part. Make a copy for each student. Okay? So make a copy for each student, and then they're going to get their own copy, and they can turn it back into you. Give a due date. Put it in a topic, give it points, choose who you're assigning it to, choose which students are going to get it, schedule it, save it as a draft, or assign it. So there it is. It's assigned. students to write on screen. Here I go. And um, let's see, I'm going to go to musicplayonline.com. And oops, that's the webinar window. And I searched on music play for this tempo worksheet. Um, it's in the song Chester. It's in a couple of places and you just click on it and then click download. So there we are. I'm going to already downloaded it and then you're going to put that into your Google Drive. So you can go to Google Drive and drop it in. I've already done that. So that's pretty easy. You just go to drive.google.com and upload it or drag and drop it in, um, depending on which platform you're on. The neat thing is, here I am in a um, Google Classroom right now, and this is my Music Play Online workshop class. I'm in the classwork section. If you remember from my last webinar with all of you, um, wait a second, is my camera on? I feel like my camera's on. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can see my screen, but you can't see me. Um, if you remember from my last workshop, um, which is still available in the workshop section and it's available in the Odyssey, um, I showed you guys that in Google Classroom, it's important to use the classwork section up here at the top to post all assignments. Do not use the stream to post assignments or you're going to confuse all your students. Use classwork because that's where you can grade things. So what you do is click create, and we are going to create an assignment 
using that PDF, um, and the PDF looks like this, by the way, just as a reminder, that was my download. And see, it has a lot of blanks to fill in, right? Um, and we're not gonna use pencil and paper because we're on Chromebooks. Um, and we are gonna make a new Kami assignment. In order to do this, you have to have the Kami Chrome extension installed. This is what the Kami extension thing looks like in Chrome. To install extensions in Chrome, you click on this little thing that looks like a paintbrush, sort of. Looks like a long paintbrush with blobs on it, and it says extensions. And you click on Manage Extensions, and you can type in Kami. And you'll find it, and then you can add it to your browser. Now, in order to really use this, your students also have to have Kami installed. So double check with your school's IT department or whoever's in charge of your technology stuff, maybe your library media specialist, and check to see which app your students are able to use. There are other ones called, I believe, Doc Hub, and then there are many others. You can Google like how to write on a PDF in Google Classroom, and you'll find many extensions. Kami is probably the most well-known. So I've got the Kami extension installed and all my students have it installed on their Chromebooks. I had to install it on my Mac um, because um, my Mac did not have it yet. So I'm going back here. I'm in Google Classroom. I'm going to click Create Kami Assignment. And I am going to assign it to this and it, I, I can choose which class it goes to. So I'm gonna assign it to this Music Play Online workshop class. I'm going to assign it to all students and um, I'm gonna publish it. You could also save it as a draft. And we're going to call this the Tempo Word. Um, hmm, I'm just gonna call it Tempo Words. And fill in the blanks. You may use, um, the draw tool or text boxes. Um, it's up to the student. Um, if somebody asked before, how did you add um, bullets? So in my MacBook Pro, I have an emoji font installed as a font. And in my touch bar, I have installed my emoji font. So it's quick and easy. So I can just tap it. Um, you can't see me right now, but I tap it in the touch bar and put it in. And I could make another one and make what look like bullets and it makes it a little bit prettier, right? I can also add an emoji here and add some music there to make it look more beautiful. Assign and give points, choose a due date. Let's make it due on Friday. I can even schedule a time um, for it to show up. I'm gonna schedule it for now. I'm going to put it in my music lessons. And then I need the actual assignment, right? So I need to click on drive. And I need to find the assignment, which was five, um, what was the title of this? 05004, 05004. Search, there it is. Select. And did it attach? Yes, there it is. And here is what's really important in Google Classroom. Somebody asked about this in the questions as well. Make a copy for each student. If you don't select this, the students are all going to draw on the same exact copy and you're not gonna know who did what work. So make a copy for each student. Um, sometimes you might wanna send out a PDF and not have them edit it so you can select that or if you want students to all write on one copy of something, you can do that as well. I can't even envision when that would be necessary in a music class. So make a copy for each. Cami instructions to students in case they don't know how to use Cami. So if you have fifth or sixth graders that Cami is new, you can send the Cami instructions or not. I'm going to uncheck that. And I click assign. And I have to authorize Google Drive to work with my account. And this just got hidden under my screen share button. Allow. And this will post in my music play. An assignment. 
and let's take a look at it. So it's right here. Tempo words. Let's go back to the stream. It's right here. Here it is, the pretty one with the music notes on it. And the students will click on this and you click open with Cami. And when they open it in Cami, and this is also similar in, they can choose to just draw with the pen, which is what I did here with the word fast. So something means very quickly, as fast as you can go. And let's go up here to the word bank. I think that's prestissimo. So let's write in press. This is hard with a trackpad. Press tis. I need an actual mouse. E mo. Sorry, I actually do have really good handwriting. <laughs> and then let me show you another way. Vivace means you can add a text box and just click here and a text box appears. Vivace means fast and lively. And so the student can just type in, which works much faster. Okay, and they can even type in their name. Okay, right, my grade is fifth. Okay, and the students might save that. They can also download it, they can print it. Here's a download, here's a print, here's a share, all of that, and they've saved it now. So that's a really cool, quick and easy way for students to draw on a PDF. And you could use this, you could teach this to other teachers in your building as well. You could use this across departments. Um, I think your Spanish teacher would enjoy having this or your French teacher and um, uh, very, very, very useful. Okay, so now I think we are going to bring Denise on and um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we will bring Denise on and answer a few questions. And Trying to um, look at the questions that you have here. Uh, Margo asked, what am I using to write? Um, I was using the little draw tool inside Cami. There's a little brush or pen. And I'm using a trackpad on my MacBook Pro, which is really hard to, to draw letters. Okay, hello, Denise. Denise, I can't hear you. I think Denise is muted. Um, Naomi also asked, um, is this recorded and will it be sent out? All of the workshops for Webinar Wednesdays are in the workshop section of your Music Play online um, site. Should I share my screen and show you guys? Why don't I show you where that is? I'm gonna do that because yeah. this is a really, so here we go to find your way around. So I'm sharing my screen and let me go back to music play. <laughs> Oops, there's the webinar, close this. So here's the music play website. Let me click on the music play name up here. I have this kind of shrunk down. By the way, this is also a really good trick. Let me show you from the three dots. a lot with students where they can't see a whole page, click on the three dots and resize your window here with the plus and minus. So on the Music Play website, down here on the left, you will see online learning. That's for, oops, that's for the students. And what did I just do, Denise? How did I miss? Oh, it's right here. It's above that. Webinars. Here we go. And it, the um, URL is music play on workshops forward slash. So here you will see every single Wednesday webinar going all the way back to when Denise started these. Um, so here's a movement activities. Here's adapting singing games for no touch classes, all kinds of things. And she even dropped in the Seesaw Music Play workshop and the Google Classroom Music Play workshop from Odyssey. This one was Amy Burns. And this one was fine. If you haven't seen that one, um, 
Either one of those, I highly recommend using them. Um, my school uses both Seesaw and Google Classroom. Um, so um, I will be re-watching Amy's session tonight, actually. Um, and today's workshop, you will see right here where it's blank on my screen right now. And you will see the preview of that once we are finished. Um, so you can re-watch it anytime right after we finish. Um, let's see, let me go back. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. <laughs> And we are gonna jump into some other questions here. And Denise and I will both be back on the screen. Yeah. Hello, Denise. <laughs> Hi, Kathleen. This is so fun doing this when we're on opposite sides of the continent. It's really, really quite I neat. I know. <laughs> um, so we can just run through the questions. Question one, I think Kathleen just answered. She, it's, are there any resources from the webinar? And she just took you to the place. I think instead of the whole lesson is using the search tool to isolate the song and then copying the URL. So that's question two. Um, question three, when I'm using the search area, it is not pulling up all of the choices. Oh, okay. For example, it didn't pull in, jump in, jump out. That is because jump in, jump out is in, and those ones are going to be linked in the new build. In the old build, only the ones in the song list are linked. So if it's something in the units, um, if all else fails, send Denise an email, denise at musicplay.ca, and I can probably tell you quickly where it is. Uh, another question, when I type in songs, sometimes more than one comes up, and when I link it, it doesn't go straight to that song. There are tricks. To write the song, which is lyrics, and it searches titles, and it searches keywords, which include concepts. So if it's at, uh, I wanted to find a link to Rocky Mountain, but when I put in Rocky Mountain, it found two songs because Rocky Mountain was part of the lyrics of another song. So then I typed Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain, and that isolated Rocky Mountain. It is not going to work for every single song, but it will work for about 90. Okay. Question And five. I see a this question here. Oh, I don't, I don't have a list. Oh, I guess Carrie Lynn um, sent it to my Gmail. I, and I don't have my Gmail yeah, open. I was looking email. at the other one. I was going to answer another one though. Somebody, somebody asked if there are handouts available and the handouts are available right above where you see the chat. There's a little thing that says resources there and a PD circuit is also there. So you can just go right above the chat window in the webinar and you will find it. Okay, so, and somebody asked in question number five, could you put directions in the presenter's notes? Um, all of the shortcut directions are in there, yes. So like how to hyperlink, how to everything else. If you want a step-by-step -step direction um, uh, with um, screenshots of how to do everything, if that would be helpful, um, why don't you give me a thumbs up in the chat or say, yes, that would be helpful if you think it would be helpful. And I'll, I'll take a look if I can do that. Um, I, I think um, also you had offered to give them those Google Slides. Yes, I am going to upload the Google Slides slide show. I yeah. will upload that, I think that, that Google Slides. I am losing you. I don't question things keep freezing a little bit. Um, sorry about that, my friends. Um, it is storming uh, we, here outside of New York City. Yeah. Question number six. Question number six. If you put in a particular hyperlink, will they need to log in? once the usernames and passwords are activated. Um, Denise can answer that better about the rebuild, but I think they're gonna need to be logged in first and then they just click on it and it'll open. Um, uh, the rebuild is not out yet. Right now, the students do not need to be logged into anything. There is no student. 
just click the link that you've posted and everything just, it just works. So um, just give them the link. Uh, let's see, question number seven. Would you post the link the same way into a Google Classroom classwork or can you do it in a slideshow? You can do it either way, as I just showed. You can put things in a slideshow, you can put it in Google Classroom, um, you could put it somewhere else, um, but remember, like, be careful about where you post it. So don't post it on your public Google site, right? So that just anybody can get things, right? So um, put it inside your learning management system. That's the best place for it. Um, let's see, question number eight. How can we get around the students being able to navigate to other things on the Music Play site? Um, I actually want my students to go to other things on the Music Play site. So I don't want them searching the site. You would have to give them explicit directions of not looking around. But I'll tell you, my students got so excited when we went to e-learning and um, the username and password was removed from Music Play and they could just go on and do like poison patterns at home. And they just, they had such a good time because that's one of their favorite activities in class is doing like poison, poison solfege and poison rhythms. Um, so things that they might know. Um, uh, and if you don't want them to do that, just tell them not to do that. <laughs> if you have something like Clever, you can actually log them off. So you can, you can close out the site for them because you have control over what they're using. You can open the site and you can close the site for them. So that's, that's another, that would be like an advanced, advanced webinar. <laughs> or, or you can, maybe we can do something in a, in a of how to do that in Clutter. Um, let's see. Question nine, is it possible to present Music Play online without it going to full screen mode? I need to share a screen a screen between this and Zoom. Oh, you wanna be able to see both? I recommend, so we're doing um, our hybrid stuff on Zoom as well. I recommend using two devices and having something on one device and something on another device. Uh, um, it's very helpful to see what the students see. We were using Google Meet in the spring during e-learning, and I always presented from my uh, MacBook Pro, but I had my Chromebook open to monitor as well and to take attendance. Um, Google Meet has an attendance extension called Meet Attendance, where it'll take attendance for you um, on your Google Meets. It was really great. Um, but using the two devices helps a lot. You can also do a split screen. Department to help you out with that. Let's see, Denise. Question ten is for you. Um, I, I, I was actually hoping Carolyn might jump in here too because I'm oh, not perfect. Um, I'm pretty confident that there will be a lot more individual links to songs and to activities. So you will be able to do that. Somebody chatted. How do we link to the game? Have to. Um, I'll post it on the Music Play Teachers Group on Facebook because I have a URL that will take them straight to the games. Then they have a choice of 15 and you have to tell them which number you want them to play. And again, like Kathleen said, I'd let them explore all the other games after. I think that's yeah. um, a great way to do it. But um, our upgrade, I'm just going to see if Carrie Lynn has uh, given me an answer. I just want to add that with the games, but that. I tell the students. And the link ability is better. With the games, what I did in the spring is I would just send kids directly to Music Play Online and say, look at the games down the side. And what was odd is that on some of our Chromebooks, the games appeared down the side. And on some of the Chromebooks, the games appeared on the bottom. And there was, I, I yeah. never figured out why some of the Chromebooks showed it differently. Um, they were all using Google Chrome. They are all showed it differently. Um, and that's a Chromebook thing. That's a <laughs> so. command line thing. If the screen's bigger, it resizes to the bottom. And if the screen is yeah. uh, smaller, it'll be on the side. So command plus, command minus would shift that around. Oh, thank you for that. Everybody remember that, command plus and command minus. <laughs> Or 
Somebody um, asked, can, can we use... 11. Okay. I, I'm i fine with you using the Music Play logo in your Google Classroom. I think that's great. I've seen a number of virtual classrooms that have used the um, Music Play logo as part of their classroom. Feel free. Go ahead and use I also put mine in as a link. I put a screenshot of it as a link in Clever for the kids once they're in Clever, which is a single sign-on thing, they can click that logo when they see it and it takes them straight to Music Play Online. Um, so that makes it really easy from Clever. Um, let's see, question 12. My school is not Google-based. We are Microsoft Suite. I have to do all this in PowerPoint. Can my kids access the PowerPoint? sure how Microsoft, I would assume you're on Microsoft Teams. I would check with your IT department about how that transfers across. I've never used Teams. Um, I've used about every other platform that exists, but not Teams. So um, check with your library and media specialist about that one. Um, is there a way we can zoom in on the songs and music play online for visually impaired students? Yes, it's exactly what I showed you when I just shared the screen. Click on of, um, Google Chrome and resize the screen. Um, you can also flip the screen to different contrast levels for visually impaired students. Um, so again, ask your IT department or your librarian media specialist to show you how to do that on the operating systems you're using on your students' Chromebooks. Um, some students are really good at finding all one of those students because they, they know how to find all of those hidden controls to change their screen to different colors and things. Um, let's see. There are also, I should mention, there are also accessibility controls on Chromebooks where kids can have a very large outline around the mouse pointer and stuff so that they can see things much easier as they move around the screen. Um, again, ask your IT department um, how you're doing that on your devices. You already answered question 14, Denise. Somebody, question and 15, how do you make, Go ahead, Denise, sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna say, in the updated rebuild, when we rebuild, I think we will be able to link directly to each game. And if not to each game, we certainly directly to Got it. Denise seems a little bit frozen for me. I'm frozen. Yes. Nope, now you're not frozen. <laughs> um, makes me want to jump into a, 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 a frozen song right now. <laughs> uh, 14, something with something with chili ice or something. Uh, 14, uh, no, 15. How do you make bullet points in the assignment in Google Classroom? I just showed you how to do that. Um, so hopefully that was answered. Uh, just install an emoji font. Um, if you have a Mac, you can install the emoji and have it appear on the touch bar or just install it as a separate keyboard. Um, let's see. My kids do not have Gmail because they log in with school email. What do students need to access? Google Classroom must be set up if it's for a school. And this is as per Google um, agreement. You, you have to use a school Google Classroom account with students in schools if you're in the United States. I'm not sure other countries, but you cannot use a personal Gmail. Like some of the stuff I was showing you today, I was using my personal Gmail account, which I do things and I also use it for like children's choir at church and things. Um, my personal Gmail, I cannot use with students at school. You have to use your school's dedicated Google account. Um, so talk to your IT department about setting that up for you, um, but do not use a personal Gmail with school children. Um, it opens up um, a lot of
student safety, security, all of those issues. And it's against Google's terms of service as well. Um, so make sure you're using a school Google Classroom. Um, can you include an icon in the direction area of assignments or does it have to be an attachment? Yes, you can use icons anywhere in um, a Google Classroom assignment. I'll share my screen really quickly and show you. Um, let me go to Google Classroom. Uh, here we go, workshop. Um, this is the one from July, actually. So you can put an icon in the directions. Let's do, oh, this one I'm in as a student. I have to go to a different Google Classroom. This one, I'm a teacher. Uh, classwork, let's create an assignment. So I can put icons anywhere in here. I could put in like a, um, and we could sing a song about love. Um, let's sing about love. Maybe this is Valentine's Day time. And you can put in any kind of icon here. You can put in this. You're going to click the link below to go to Music Play Online. And let's actually go to Music Play Online and let's search for, oops, that's the workshop. Let's go to kindergarten. I'm going to search the word love. Submit. Let's find a song about love. Um, which one should I choose? Hmm. Oh, I love Bebop the Bear. That's one of my favorite songs. Um, Ali. Okay, so we're going to type Lee. Oops. I don't know why this just changed to music notes. Something is glitching. Let's let's just grab um, Mountaintop Monster. I think because I'm in rhythms. Let me search again. Mountaintop Monster. <laughs> and that. Uh, and go back to my classwork section. And I'm going to add another link by adding a computer icon. And I'm gonna add the link right there, plus I'm going to add it here. So the students can click on either one. And you could add any font. Sing your favorite phrase to someone you love. And you could assign this. And I added tons of emojis in there. Uh, okay, let me go back to, I lost the, the uh, Vimeo window, here we go. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> and so you can add those emojis anywhere within the assignment. Uh, 18, is there a way to track if the kids actually did it? Um, within Seesaw, you can ask them to make a vocal or a video response. In my in the other sessions that I gave during the Odyssey, I talked about having kids um, either submit a video to you in Google Classroom or uploading to Flipgrid or something similar. So I would recommend going and watching those videos from Odyssey about Flipgrid and about Google Classroom so that you can text that person in your school and find out how they're having students record responses. Seesaw, the kids can also click on the microphone and record to you, um, which is really wonderful. Um, let's see, 19. How do you make it so that each student can do the activity in slides without changing it for all the students? This is really important. When you assign the slides to the student in Google Classroom, click make a copy for each student. And then the students get their own set of slides and they edit it. If you do only once, <laughs> and I learned my lesson, if you don't do that, all the students are gonna be writing on the same form. And um, you're never gonna know if anybody did it or who did what. Um, question 20, does Music Play Online work well on Chromebooks? You bet, it works great on Chromebooks. 
Do the kids need to have a flash player for everything to work? Denise no. or Scott we or have, Carrie Lynn? I don't think flash, yeah, I, right? No? I can jump in. We have no flash on the website at all. We've never used flash because we knew that it was going to be obsolete in a relatively short period of time. And so we never ever built anything in flash. Kids do not need flash to be able to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as all of you know, flash is going away in December of this year. So when, when we turn to um, the year 2021, there will be no more flash. So anything that functions on flash, like think of some of the other websites like Carnegie kids or something like that, where you can go and like watch little clips of things. Those websites run on flash. They won't work anymore in January unless somebody upgrades them. So I think you're. And some things disappear due to the flash issue until people update them, but music play online, you don't need it. Um, let's see, 22, for all these directions, are you um, teaching kids how do you do the technology things like attach a screenshot? Um, yeah, I. you have to teach the kids how to use the technology along the way. Do, never assume that the kids already know how to do some things and then some things they will never have learned. So sometimes it's the music teacher that teaches them that and sometimes it's the art teacher and sometimes it's their third grade teacher and sometimes it's the librarian media specialist and sometimes it's another specialist or a parent or somebody else. So we all do our part to help them learn the technology. Um, and give them as much of it as you can, like teaching them how to resize windows and stuff. That's really important stuff for things even outside music. Um, somebody asked, could I go over how to take a screenshot? In the handouts, it tells you um, exactly um, the commands you need to take a screenshot. So um, I would just check that out. <laughs> um, we're on part two of questions now. Wow. Um, how oh, do you lock items? Two. How do you lock items in edit mode so kids can? Um, you can put things behind another box. Um, so you can cover things up or you can embed it as a background. Um, anything you don't want kids moving around, I would recommend moving to the back of the slide as a background image and then kids won't move it around. Um, let's see. Somebody asked, could you do a single page slide so slideshow with that sorting activity? Yes, you can. And I'm actually as a single page slideshow. Okay, so that you can just use that one page if you want. And then I'll I'll give you my the whole thing if you if you want that as well. Um, somebody asked me, what am I using to teach the webinar? Um, the webinars are presented through Vimeo, um, but I recorded that first 34 minutes using ScreenFlow. And ScreenFlow is a um, sort of like Screencastify. It's a paid app uh, or a paid software that lives on my computer. It's not on the web. And you can capture your screen. You can capture yourself. You can capture external mics, internal mics. You can even capture your cat walking behind you on the piano sometimes. Um, it's very powerful editing software. Um, I also used that to make that virtual choir of my school song where I had all the different puppets singing and my cats were singing. Make virtual choirs for my church. Uh, so it's pretty powerful editing software, sort of like Final Cut. If you're a PC user, you can use something called Camtasia. Um, there are also things online like Screencastify or WeVideo. Um, let's see, somebody asked, will Cami work on an iPad? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, I can ask Siri right now on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I can post the answer to that in the music play group. Um, let's see. Somebody asked, how do you make a request to Google? Aha, uh -huh. you know what? I'll post a link in the music play teachers group and also in um, the Google classroom for music teachers group of how to put in a request to Google about things that you would like to see change. Like I saw people asking the question early on in the, today's webinar. 
that changed the ability to schedule assignments to multiple classes. And they have not, you cannot schedule a post to appear say at like 8 a.m. on Friday for seven classes at once. You can post it right now to seven classes at once, but you can't schedule it to seven at once. And that is not cool, right? <laughs> we would love to have that ability to do that. So I'll post a link for you guys in the Facebook groups, um, how you can contact Google. Um, it's important that they hear because they do listen. Um, are students able to see the emojis even if they're not using an Apple device? Yes, they are. They see the emojis. Mm -hmm. And do students download the Kami extension? The Kami extension has to be installed in the browser and your IT department can push that out to all um, I also recommend highly this is going to be like the big tip of the day I recommend highly that you ask your IT department nicely to put a link to music play online in the bookmarks of all student devices so that your students can get directly to Music Play Online from their student devices anytime they want to, not just when they're in music class. And um, they can put that in the bookmarks and the kids are really good at finding the bookmarks and on top as shortcuts as well, just like we have a doc on a Mac. And um, the kids love using those bookmarks to find things. Um, let's see. Um, somebody said people are having trouble with the resource, uh, the handout. Um, they're fixing that right now on the back end. We can also post that in the group. I can post that in the music play group if that works. Um, yeah. and what other questions do we have? Denise, do you have any questions? <laughs> Um, I, I just Googled, does Kami work on iPads? And the answer is yes. It's a Chrome extension. So as long as you have Google Chrome on the iPads, Kami should work. So I found that answer for you. Um, Thank you. And there was a question, Kathleen, are students able to see emojis even if they are not using an Apple device? Yes, they can. So the emojis show up oh. for students no matter what. And um, Remember also that Google Classroom looks, um, it works really well on iPads and it works really well on Chromebooks and on other devices as well. I also, I try to look at Google Classrooms from an iPad as well so that I see what students would see from there. The day is that you need to add, ask your IT department for a fake student account for Google Classroom, because Google Classroom does not have the ability for you to view as a student. So you never see the student view like you can do in Seesaw. Seesaw allows you to click something and see it as sample student. Google Classroom doesn't have that. So I know our IT department set up some student accounts to drop into a class if you need to check something. And then you log into that student in a different browser tab and or a different browser window and um, you can see what the students see and you might need to make a screenshot and remind students of how to get to classwork or how to get to stream or whatever else. Um, so um, more questions. Is there a way to edit any of the ready-made distance learning lessons? That's a question. No, but we are working towards an editable lesson planning platform for you in the rebuild. It's not going to happen in version one, but we're working towards that. So the only way right now is for you to give the kids the link to the online learning module that you want them to do and then tell them, I want you to do number one and the rest is optional. There's another way as well, Denise, there's one more way, is you can use Screencastify. You can use Screencastify yes. and record yourself teaching the lesson and then give your students the Screencastify video and put it in Google Classroom or whatever you're using, if you're using School Schoology or you can put it in um, Seesaw. Um, so you could record yourself. And as I said in my summer workshops, it's always preferable to teach live. Whenever you can teach live, 
Um, if you cannot teach live, teach with self on video rather than just giving kids links to something else. Um, um, and Denise has been amazing to record all of that for us. I know my students know you. They're like, that's Denise on the screen. <laughs> so they know. And it was from the um, the beat echo patterns where you're standing up and doing the, um, you know, like ta, ta, ti, 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 ta things, the body percussion. Um, we were in, in the building together um, before we closed down. And so they'd always be like, that's Denise. Um, let's see. And more questions. Our district is supposed to be getting us a subscription. When will students need a login? That's a Denise um, I don't well. have an exact date for that. Uh, my, my, what is going to happen? We're going to keep the view of the website that you're looking at now. And you can choose to continue using that for a while. I think we'll keep it up till December. and. In conjunction with that, as soon as the website has been tested and is good to go live, students will need a login to get into the rebuild. But the um, the classic view is going to be open to students, we think, a little longer. And I just saw a really great comment, by the way, in the chat that somebody said they used Loom um, to make a, Loom is similar to Screencastify and ScreenFlow to make a video to show students around the Music Play site. And so that's a really good idea. Um, I'll be doing that for every aspect of our stuff. Like even I'll probably make one of how to go from clever to Music Play, you know, things like that, how to go from Seesaw to Music Play, how to, you know, like all the connections that students need to make or how to enter a username and password somewhere, or how to scan your clever badge, because um, our kids hold up a little QR code to, to log in. Um, so you can use Loom or Screencastify or ScreenFlow. Um, let's see, somebody asked, do you have a workshop on using two devices? Oh, do you mean like when you're Zooming and I said I use like two devices? That would be interesting. Um, I could certainly shoot a quick tips thing. Um, there are teachers who do it. Um, David Sabella who in the professional voice teachers Facebook group um, has done a bunch of videos of how to teach from two devices. Um, and I believe there are some on the National Conference of Keyboard Pedagogy because the piano teachers have been teaching online for, you know, like 15, 17 teaching piano lessons on, on Skype like 15 or more years ago. So um, there, there are a lot of people using two camera views. So learn from the private teachers because they've been doing it for over a decade. Um, let's see. Somebody asked, could I, you I please want to jump do... in if I can. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did a Zoom lesson um, a week ago. And what I was finding, I was losing my screen shared. So I pulled up my iPad and I was using the recordings on my iPad, but my iPad was just sitting there and the kids were doing the song with me. Let's clap our hands, boys and girls. And so if you're able to teach live, I think that's actually a really, really easy, easy way to teach live lessons. And then after the lesson, you can give them a link to that module and you can say, if you would like to do any of these activities again, just for fun, here's the link to it. But that, again, keeps the face-to-face -face connection with you and your students. Sorry, Kathleen. <laughs> That's great. I love that song, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Time for music. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. That one. <laughs> love that song. Um, let's see. Somebody asked, um, could you do a Brightspace webinar, music play webinar? I don't even know what Brightspace is. Something they're using in Toronto. I, I I've never heard of Brightspace. I, I, I don't know, but you know what? I'll put it in my request list and I'll see if we can find anybody. I actually emailed Canvas. 
can he seem feel confident doing a webinar for us? And Canvas said, go to the community and ask them. So they weren't much help either. I'm going to have to join the Canvas community forum and find somebody there that, um, yeah, or, or we could post on the Google Classroom page too and see if there's anybody there that's um, really conversant yeah. in Canvas. So, yeah, we'll... We'll try. I think we'll we have we some of do. our admins in the Google Classroom group who use Canvas as well. So we might be able to, I can find you someone, Denise, that uses Canvas. That um, I've never used that. I used to use Blackboard Vista when I was a college professor. And I miss that because it had, it, and that was like 15 years ago, it literally had everything you would need. And it seems like all of the other platforms now, like Google Classroom, there are things that you go, oh, I wish I had this. I wish I could do this. There are certain things that are missing in every platform that you wish were there. I don't know if we have any more questions at all. Um, Carrie Lynn, do we have any others? Let's see. Oh, equipment needed to use music play out online outside. Okay. Oh, this is a great question. Um, Denise. I, I just in, wrote Denise? a newsletter. I'm going to jump in. I, I just wrote a newsletter on Teach. Um, if you didn't get the newsletter, send me an email and I'll happily send it to you. But the, the basic list is you have to have a voice microphone. Absolutely. Um, as long as you have Music Play Online on computer or on iPad, you can teach everything from there. And then you just connect it to a speaker. I still prefer my wired speakers to Bluetooth because that's dependent on Wi-Fi and when Wi-Fi. I like, and I have a little portable JBL. I can show you. This is my little portable JBL. It's got a long, long battery life, and I think it would last me for a whole day teaching outdoors. And it's louder than you would think from one this size. I think I just bought this at Costco. So check your check your local Costco. This newsletter, there was lots of ideas about teaching outdoors. Um, for example, uh, uh, for seating, rolled up towels works. Another person was using buckets from their bucket drumming. Another person was using milk crates and the school had bought every kid in the school milk crate that they would bring their um, notebook and pencil if they needed whatever they needed to bring outside with them. They brought it outside. They had materials and they set that out on the milk crate. Spots on the grass so you can have your seating done. Um, chalk, sidewalk chalk is a really fun thing to do in, in outdoor lessons and all kinds of activities. But the latest newsletter has um, has all these ideas. Uh, you can't, of course, project, but you know what? I taught for 30 years in the classroom without projectors. It can be done. Um, we, it's a nice luxury, but guess what? You don't always have it. Okay, I think that's it, Kathleen. So I am going to say a huge thank you and huge applause to Kathleen for doing this for us. Um, I'm so happy that we have somebody who's willing to share this. With this group. I'm no, no Google expert. And so it's really, really helpful for me to learn as well what, how things can be done within the, the Google platform. And um, Kathleen, I want to say big, huge thank you to you. And um, again, our builders on the uh, the new build, there's they don't think fall 2020. I'm I'm thinking October is what it's looking like now. It's been pushed back a little week. So, uh, Kathleen, if you want to have uh, say a final good. <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll make their thank you so much for coming to the webinar. I hope everybody has a safe start to your school year mm -hmm. and that you are still able to 
um, spend a lot of great music making time with your students, whether it's virtual, hybrid, or um, if you are full in, um, please be safe, please have fun, um, please just tell the student the most important thing right now and um, use every great resource you can use. And um, there's so much on there right now. Um, so please um, have a great start to your school year and check in with us in the Facebook group with any other questions. Okay, have a great night. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank <laughs> you.